Putin, 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 Putin. You're still recording? What's up guys? My name is Francis and welcome back to the Rugged Tyros. If you're new to this channel, a Tyro is a beginner. Come with me as we learn and explore the great outdoors. So today we're gonna make a fun and delicious Canadian dish. That's right, we're making fries, gravy, and cheese curds, poutine. Now, oh, it's my friend Marilou. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Good, and you? Listen, you're saying poutine wrong. Are you sure? Well, Francis, I'm from Quebec. Right, right, right. Sorry, sorry. Poutine. No, Putin. That's what I said. Putin. 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 Whatever, close enough. Ah, thanks, Marilou. I wouldn't have known. No problem. Anytime. Bye. You as well. Horror So this is a real simple and easy recipe to do. I'm an expert by no means, but this is how I like to make this uh, traditional simple Canadian dish. Let's get started. All right, so this is what we're gonna need to get started. So what we're gonna need in this dish is one large russet potato or three small ones like I have here from the garden, one cup of beef stock and one cup of chicken stock like I've combined here in my Pyrex cup, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, one for the air fryer and one just for seasoning the fries, one and a half tablespoons or more of High Mountain Seasonings Trail Dust All-Purpose Seasoning. It kind of has a slight citrus flavor with a little kick and smoky taste. One tablespoon of Cattle Boy's Big Country Garlic Seasoning, one of my faves. One and a half teaspoons Worcestershire Sauce. One teaspoon soy sauce. A fourth cup of cold water. Three tablespoons of cornstarch as well as some cheese curds. What I forgot to picture here is one tablespoon of cold unsalted butter, as well as garlic powder. I'm Filipino, so I can't get enough garlic. So I'm gonna start by cutting up my potatoes. So you can use fresh potatoes from a friend's garden or grocery bought potatoes, or if you just wanna save some time, you can also use frozen potatoes. So I have some water in a bowl, so when I'm finished cutting up the potatoes, I throw it in here so that they don't brown, and we're gonna let them soak in here too to kind of pull out the starch. So I try to wash off and scrape off a lot of the crud as I can, and that's because I like to keep the peels on. That's just a personal preference. You can peel them if you want, that's all on you. So I try to keep my cuts as even as possible. There we go. So once I'm done cutting my potatoes, I like to rinse it off one more time, strain it, and then add more cold water to it. So now we let this rest for about 30 minutes. All right, so now that those have sat for about 30 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and strain them and then we're gonna pat them dry. I forgot paper towel. So now we strain the potatoes. All right, so now we're gonna take our potatoes and we're gonna pat them dry. We're gonna blot them with paper towel. So as I blot them and dry them out, I'm gonna start putting them into the air fryer. The beauty of the air fryer is I don't even have to preheat it. Once you put it in there, set your ingredients, you hit go, it just heats up and goes. So my next step is I'm gonna take one tablespoon of my olive oil and drizzle that all over my fries. 
Now that my fries are in the air fryer and it looks like I made quite a bit, I'm gonna set it for 30 minutes as opposed to 20, but I'm gonna keep checking up on it every now and then just to make sure that they're cooking through. Now while the fries are doing their thing, I'm gonna go ahead and start the gravy. So I'm gonna add the beef broth and the chicken broth that I mixed earlier and set into the saucepan cold. Now I'm gonna add the trail dust and the garlic seasoning into the mix. With the flavor of the big country seasoning and garlic powder, whoa. So I'm gonna add the soy sauce, the Worcestershire sauce, and the cold water into the saucepan. Now I'm gonna turn that to high heat. Then I'm gonna let that come to a boil as I slowly whisk it, just making sure I don't burn anything. So now that I've gotten this to a boil, I'm gonna slowly start adding in my cornstarch to kind of thicken it up. It's up to you how much you want to add. It depends on the thickness. So just do it slowly, make sure it doesn't clump and try not to burn it. So I just let that kind of simmer a bit, whisk it from time to time until I get the thickness I want. So now that my gravy is a bit thicker, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in that tablespoon of cold butter whisk it in and then let it simmer and sit for a bit mmm gravy all right guys so the fries are pretty much done the gravy simmering so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pull out the fries and then while they're still hot I'm gonna put the olive oil on top of them and I'm gonna season it with my big country garlic cattle boy seasoning Super crispy, man. So this next sound is what I want to hear. That tells me that they're super, super crispy. Just how I like them. So I'm gonna drizzle this olive oil all over my fries. All right, so while everything is still incredibly hot, I'm gonna start plating up because now this is the fun part. This is where my poutine comes together. So I put a generous amount of fries on my plate. Then I take my cheese curds and lay them out on top. Fries. And then some more cheese curds. More cheese curds. And now we add the gravy. Excuse me, I'm gonna get my camera for this shot. And that right there, folks, is my style of poutine. You can top this with like meat and some other stuff, but this is how I like it, just plain and simple. This is what I call my traditional poutine. The taste test. I'm gonna not be so savage, I'll get a fork. All right guys, I'm about to dig in. Cheers. Oh, good. Mm. 
And there you have it, folks. Delicious traditional Canadian poutine. Before we end this video, I just want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Connected to the Land. Connected to the Land was created to bring Canadians together during a time of isolation. Connected to the Land has articles and videos on a variety of topics including gardening, recipes, DIYs, hunting, and ice fishing. Don't forget to check out Connected to the Land's podcast to hear how everyday Canadians are connecting to the land. You'll find this recipe in the description below and as well you'll also find it on connectedtotheland.info. I hope you guys found this video as entertaining as I enjoyed making it. If so, please share this video, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, then that bell icon for more notifications from the Rugged Tyros only here on Tequila Creative. It's free to do and it helps me out a ton. Thank you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one.